Before we begin, let me say that if you don't own a cuticle nipper yet and you're watching this, nice job on doing your homework. There's a lot of different types of cuticle nippers out there and so many options for each type that it can be really hard to make sense of everything. So to help simplify things today, I'm just going to talk about the common plier type of cuticle nipper. But even after I narrow the selection down to the one basic type, there's still a lot to consider. In the next couple of minutes, I'll help you make sense of things like joint type, jaw length, stainless steel versus plated tools, and a few other details. So the first thing you need to know about cuticle nippers is the joint type. There are two basic types, lap and box. Now a lap joint is a traditional joint where two halves of the nipper overlap. It's been around for centuries, it's durable, and it works really well. A box joint, on the other hand, has one half forged directly through the steel of the other half. A box joint shows quality construction kind of like a dovetail joint would in a piece of furniture. Now that being said, keep in mind that all joints can have problems. So check the joint quality and it's really easy to do. Just hold the tool like this and then twist. If you feel movement or hear any kind of a clicking noise, don't use it. The second thing to consider when choosing your cuticle nippers is a spring. Generally speaking, the most common types are a double spring or a single spring. Now, a single spring slides across the opposite handle and friction can sometimes be a problem. So you want to pick a spring tip that's designed to minimize friction. Frictionless springs, like a double spring, are a bit more expensive, but they do give the smoothest squeeze. Pick the spring type that suits your wallet and feels best in your hand. Avoid anything that feels kind of bumpy or grindy when you squeeze it. Next, you need to consider jaw length. Let's see, there's quarter jaw, half jaw, five millimeter, seven millimeter, full jaw, and there's even different shapes to consider, triangular, extra pointed. No wonder there's so much confusion. Here, all you need to really remember about that is the term jaw length refers to the length of the cutting edge. And regardless of shape, bigger is better. If you're not sure what size you should get, or maybe you're just starting out, start with a half jaw. That's somewhere between four and six millimeters in length, depending on the manufacturer. Now, here is the most important thing to consider when you're choosing your nipper. What is it actually made from? Traditionally, cuticle nippers are crafted of softer steel, which is tempered around 42 Rockwell because they have to be ground to shape. Because of that softness, they have to be sharpened regularly because those sharpened edges just crush against each other and dull themselves over time. Now, if you consider that a tiny bit of steel is removed every time you sharpen a nipper, it's really easy to see that repeated sharpening is actually going to shorten its lifespan. So harder steel means a longer life, and this nipper is the only one that's hardened to about 54 Rockwell. Now, Germanic here also uses design features like these crush stoppers to prevent dullness through over crushing as well. So they're a very good idea to use. Now, for decades, high carbon steel was used for cuticle nippers, and that steel holds an edge very well, but it can develop rust. So it's often plated in something like gold, chrome, or nickel. When plating is done very well, it's very protective and it does last a long time. But make no mistake, any plating, no matter how well done, is just not permanent. High carbon stainless steel, on the other hand, will hold an edge just as long, but it doesn't require any plating to be rust proof. So if you find it, it's actually the best option out there. There are other things to consider with a cuticle nipper, such as the point. You need to check that for problems like burrs. Check the edge for issues like chips and snags and make sure that when you squeeze it, you can see a hairline gap that just barely appears and then disappears when you squeeze it. That gap is your friend. Also, make sure you're holding it correctly. Always hold it with your palm up and a finger under the joint. Other things such as handle style, textured grips, or what kind of case to keep it in 
are also options to consider, but they really depend on your own personal preferences. Pick a nipper you like, but be sure to pick quality. Your hands and your wallet will thank you. Happy grooming!